Chapter 3, Node and Mesh Analysis. Up to this point, KC and KVL have been cumbersome to use. In your Physics 4B course, you were mostly taught to deal with multiple loop circuits to generate KVL equations. This is absolutely the worst way to solve circuits with multiple loops. Node and mesh slash loop analysis maximizes the efficiency of KVL and KCL in solving circuits problems. So what you find here is that node analysis uses KCL at nodes to generate node voltage. And remember what I mean by a node voltage, it's a potential and equipotential equations. On the other hand, mesh or loop analysis uses KVL around loops to generate mesh slash loop equations. So overall, or an overview is exactly that. So the first thing that we want to tackle is node analysis. So let's give an overview of node analysis. And then afterwards, we will talk about mesh analysis. So let's list a couple of things. So the first thing that we want to do is that the goal of node analysis is applying ACL at each node. To generate a node voltage equation. If all the node voltages are known, then one can calculate all voltages, currents, and therefore powers. That's a big deal. 
two. Voltages are potential differences where one has the ability to choose an arbitrary reference potential. For example, Consider the voltage across two charged plates. So if I have a plate here, And let's say that this plate here is positively charged. So in other words, I'm going to call this guy V2. And then I'm going to say that this plate is positively charged. I can also have, of course, a second plate. Which is negatively charged which we'll call V2. So the only thing that's meaningful when we start talking about voltage is that this voltage, this potential difference, this guy right here is what we say is meaningful. And we write this as V2 minus V1. And what you're finding here is that V1 right here, this is our arbitrary reference potential or node voltage. On the other hand, this guy right here, this is the individual node voltage, which is meaningless. The only thing that's meaningful is the difference in the potential or the voltage. <clears throat> in circuits, the arbitrary node voltage is always defined as ground. Now, I think I want to make that bigger. Therefore, one always knows at least one node 
voltage where the ground is equal to zero volts. In node analysis, one will generate a number of unknown node voltage equations. However, because we already know the reference potential, and of course this is the ground the number of unknown nodes, node voltages is N nodes minus one round which means that we have n minus 1 unknown node voltages. So every node circuit has to deal with this number of unknown voltages. So the last thing I want to say here is just for organizational purposes, we'll say that how one applies node analysis will depend on the types of sources in the circuit. So it turns out that the easiest situation, we're going to start with independent current sources, then we'll go and we will now include both independent and voltage sources. So then we're going to include now voltage sources into the circuit. And then the most challenging is dependent. sources, both current and voltage. So the first one that we want to deal with is that we want to deal with node analysis with current sources only. So let's go look at this. So consider the following multi-circuit.
So what we'll do here is that we'll have multiple elements. So this will be R1, R2, R3, and R4. And I have two current sources. I'm going to call this I source 1. And I'm going to call this one I source 2. So the process is, is that we want to use node analysis to convert current at nodes into node voltage equations using Ohm's law. So here's the process now. So the process is that we go as follows. We start doing the counting. There are three nodes where one node must be the ground. So if I start to look at this thing, we could imagine that we have the following scenario here. Well, actually, let me write this first. So that means here is that I have three nodes minus one reference, and this is going to be two unknown node voltages. Now, if I plug this in here, the previous circuit, Here's what we have. So when I look at this, I'm going to highlight this. So the first thing that I know is that one of these nodes must be the ground. And the typical choice for the ground is that this guy is zero volts, so that we know that. So now if I look at the first node, which I'll label in red, I'm going to say that this node right here is VA. And then this node over here is then going to be VB. So right away, we say that there are two unknown node voltages. We could see right away that one of them is going to be VA. And the other one is going to be VB. So if I know those node voltages, I could then go in and solve everything about the circuit here. So now the next thing that I want to do is that I want to now pick the current directions. Now, when I say pick the current directions, you should pick the ones that are most obvious to you. And the mathematics will tell you whether you pick the direction or not. So it's not a big deal. 
So you want to pick the directions and initially define resistor polarities. And we know that resistor polarities follow the passive sign convention. So if I look at R1, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say, yep. I'm assuming that VA is the higher potential. So this is going to have a polarity of plus or minus. And I'm going to call this current one. And then this current right here, I'm going to call I2. And it has that polarity. I'm thinking that VA is the higher. So when I look at R4, I'm going to guess that the potential here is like this, plus and minus. So I'm going to say that R4 has a current going down. And then I'm going to make a guess on the this on resistor three, and I'm going to guess that the polarity is plus like this. So when I look at that, I have defined four currents at each of these nodes. So now I want to come in and I want to apply KCL at each unknown node, in this case, it's going to be node A and B, and convert current into voltages using Ohm's law. So let's focus on node A. So if I look at node A, here's what I see. At node A, I'm going to, if I apply KCL, KCL says that all of the currents coming in must equal all of the currents coming out. So KCL says that the currents coming in must be the currents coming out. So when I look at this, the only current coming into the circuit is source one. Then you could see that one, two, and three are all going out. So now, if I apply Ohm's law, Ohm's law tells us that the current must be the voltage divided by the resistor. So now if I plug this into KCL, I see that I source one, remember node voltages are about what? Potential differences. So that's going to be VA minus zero for the current I1, and that's divided by R1, plus VA minus zero divided by R2, and then the other current that's going out is I3, but the potential difference between I3 here has to be VA minus VB. So when I look at this, I get this equation. And this right here is node analysis being applied. So I'm going to call this equation one. So that's exactly what node is. So now if I go to node B, I'm going to apply the same process. I'm going to use KCL slash Ohm's law. And here we go. So what is the current coming in? It's going to be I3 at node B. And then I'm going to have two currents going out. So in other words, I have I3 is then going to be I source 2 plus the current I4. 
So now if I do the exact same thing, I3 then is then going to be VA minus VB divided by R3. And then I'm going to get IS2 plus the voltage across 4. That has to be VB minus 0, since that's the ground, divided by R4. And this will be our second equation. And this will be our second equation. This process of applying KCL at nodes and converting currents into node voltage equations is called node analysis. To generate these equations is relatively easy. So in this situation, using node analysis allows one to easily, that word easily is a disturbing word, but easily, one is, uh, this is node analysis allows one to easily to generate two equations and two unknowns. So now what we want to do here is that one wants to drop the currents and only focuses on the node voltages. Now, we do not care about the currents or polarities of resistors. When you do that, we say then that this is called a node circuit because we only focus on the nodes. So let me grab this circuit here, and I want to take this with me down here, and let me paste this guy in right here, and here's what we have. So what I'm saying here is that we don't care about the currents now. We don't care about the polarities. So if I start to move these guys, when I say a node circuit, I literally mean this image right here. So this is my node circuit here. Now note, I called this three. I think I must have erased the R, but that's R3. There's a small problem. However, there are two ways to generate the exact same equations. And what you're finding here is that the two methods are, there's the textbook method, so when I look at the textbook method, 
This is the process that's nearly used in all textbooks. And they show you how to generate these two equations the way we just showed you. Unfortunately, it's not the most efficient way to solve them. So the standard way to generate node equations is not efficient. And the question is, of course, why? So when you look at these equations, let's bring these equations right here. So if I actually, let me bring both of them. When you look at these equations, look what you're actually seeing here. What you want to do here is that you want to set up these equations to solve for VA and VB to solve these equations one must still isolate the node voltages VA and VB, which requires an extra mathematical step. That is, we have to gather like terms. So when I look at this, I really have equation one. And what does it read? It reads 1 over R1, 1 over R2, 1 over R3 times the quantity VA, and then I get 1 over R3 times the quantity VB, which is then equal to plus I S1. And if I do the exact same thing to equation 2, then I'm going to have that this is 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4 times the quantity VB minus 1 over R3. And then I get the equation VA, and that equals minus IS2. So this is our final equations where we have now isolated the terms here. So the practice here is that we typically use matrix techniques. So we want it in matrix form. So if I put this into matrix form, it's then going to read something like this. It's going to read 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. And if I look at all of the VA terms, this will give me 1 over R3. And then this will give me, for the B terms, I'm going to get 1 over R3. And then finally, I'm going to get 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4. So if I look at this matrix here, it then looks like this here.
where my variables are A and B. So there's a two-step process. You write out the equations using KCL, and then you have to do the mathematical step to actually isolate A and B. Now, let's look at Carlos's method. Carlos's method bypasses the extra mathematical manipulation. And automatically puts these equations into matrix form. I can't tell you how big of a deal this is. So let's see if I could make my point a little bit stronger. Suppose you have a circuit where one generates 10 node equations using the textbooks method. After writing out all of these 10 node equations, you're not done. You still have to manipulate these equations again to isolate the variable that you're looking for. This is not the case in Carlos's method. That's why I think it's more powerful. So what you find here is that this method recognizes a pattern in the equations relative to how resistors are connected to their local node. There are two types of connections. So one, there are resistors connected to only a single node. And then there are resistors connected to two nodes. These are called mutual resistors. That is, they're mutual between two nodes. 
So to show you my method, so to show you Carlos's method, we already know what the equations look like. This is the equations. This is what we're after. So I need to get the exact same circuit. So I need to come up here and I need to grab this circuit and I'm going to bring it down with me. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to start with the exact same circuit. And so now what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to write down the node equations that is identical to this guy right here. So here we go. So what I do here is that I isolate node A. So I only focus on node A. Note that there are three resistors. And this would be R1, R2, and R3 are connected to node a. Now, note that one resistor in this case it's R3 is connected mutually is connected to two nodes In this case, it's A and B. And this is what I, I would say is that it's mutually connected to nodes A and B. And the other thing that you should note here, so when I look at node A, note that the current source I S one flows into the node, and according to the equation, you could see that on the right hand side I get a positive sign. So let's keep writing this stuff out now. Let's apply. Carlos's method. So here we go. So language issue. One over resistance is typically called a conductance. Okay, that's a conductance. So here we go. We're focused on node A. So then we say that the sum of conductances connected to VA. So if I take the sum of conductances, look at the node. How many resistors are connected to node A? One, two, and three. So their conductance values times the node A, we then come in here and that the, in the language that I just said right here, let me write it. So these are the resistors connected to node A. And then I'm going to get a minus sign. So now when we say this minus sign, we then say it's the sum of mutual 
conductances. So if I subtract the mutual conductances, then I'm going to multiply that by the node B here, the node voltage B, and then I have plus or minus, and I'm going to say that because the current flows in, and you could see from this equation, I get a plus sign. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, I end up with a positive sign because the current flows in. And I'm going to say that this is the source coming in. So one more time. We then say the plus sign implies current source flows into node A. And that's what gives us that, that, that sign here. So now let's go apply that. So if I now look at one, I'm gonna put in those equations so I could see here that I got one, two, three, so then I'm going to go, what's the sum of my conductances? And then I have my node VA. Then I ask, how many mutual resistors are there for node A? Well, I have one with the ground. I have two with the ground. And I have three with VB. So technically, I then write that this is I have, so the mutual resistors is then going to be, I have R1 plus R2 connected to the ground, and that's zero volts, and then I have R3 connected to VB, and then I ask, what are the sources, for, what are the sources doing into the node? We already said here that this is a source that's flowing into the node. But note that this guy right here is automatically zero because I'm multiplying it by zero. So right away, this equation is exactly as equation one right here. So I just generated the same equation, but in matrix form. Now I repeat the process. So now what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to isolate node B. So what I'll do here is that I'll bring the circuit down here. So we can actually see it again. And one of the things that we'll see here is that when I look at this circuit over here, what do I see here? Well, one, note that there are two resistors connected to node B. And you could see here that they're going to be I3 and I4. connected to B. And then I have one mutual resistor connected between A and B, which is, of course, R3. So now this time, look at the current source. The current source, IS2, flows out of node B. So if we chose flowing into the node to be positive, a current source flowing out of the node is negative. So then I'm going to apply this same equation up here. So if I apply the same equation, just looking at the circuit, what am I writing here? So now... Here's my second equation right here. How many conductances are connected to node B? There are two. 
I have R3 plus R4. What's it connected to? VB. Now, do I have any mutual resistors? I do. There's one resistor R3 that connects A and B. So this guy is then node resistor A. And now this time here, what we're seeing here is the current source flows out. So we assign that with the negative sign. And this is IS2. So once again, this negative sign is because the current source flows out of node B. And again, we generate the exact same equation, which is in matrix form already. So now let's summarize the process here. So now here we go. So this is node analysis. with constant current sources. And this is the process here. Step one. Choose a ground, label all nodes, and determine the number of unknown node voltages. In other words, the number of unknown node voltages is exact is going to be n minus one and that's going to tell us about the number of node voltage equations. So that's a big deal. You have to be able to do the counting so you know how many equations you have to generate. Step two. Apply the node equation to each unknown node voltage. So in other words, we're going to have the sum of conductances connected to node V1, and you're going to multiply that by V1 minus the sum of mutual conductances times however many nodes that is. And then I'm going to get a plus or minus I source. So this is our node equation right here. Now let's talk about the sign convention. 
where the sign convention or sources is I'm going to get a plus I source when the current flows into the node. And then I'm going to get a minus I source when the current flows out of the node. And then step three then reads that solve the unknown node voltages using matrix techniques. And there's one of two ways you can use a calculator or because this is an online exam or an online matrix calculator.